What is going on guys? Welcome to this new tutorial series on Neural9 about C++ programming. A couple of days ago I made a poll on YouTube where I asked you which programming language would you be most interested in for a new tutorial series? And I offered choices like Java, JavaScript, R, Go, and C, C++. And the number one choice from you guys was C, C++. But since there are two separate languages, even though they're often combined in rankings and so on, um, I made a second poll where I asked you, do you want to see a C tutorial series or a C++ tutorial series? And there the answer was clearly C++. I think it was like 79 to 21% or something. Maybe the numbers have changed, of course, uh, when you're watching this video. But it was pretty clear that C++ is going to win. And this is why we make this tutorial series right now. And this is the first episode, the introduction episode, where we're going to talk a little bit about C++ and this series in general. And in the next video, we're going to do the installation. And after that, we're going to get into coding. So let us get right into the first introduction. So let us start with the first question here, which is who is this C++ tutorial series for? And the obvious answer is it's for everyone who wants to learn C++ programming. But it is especially for everyone who wants to transition from a high level programming language to C++ or who wants to learn C++ in addition to the language that he or she already knows. So let's say you already know Python or you already know Java or you already know C Sharp or PHP or something. Um, and now you want to learn C++ in addition to that. So you want to add C++ to your arsenal. Maybe you know one of those or multiple of those. And now you want to lear learn some uh, lower level programming skills. If you're in that category, if you belong to those people, this tutorial series is perfect for you because you already know basic programming. You know what loops are, you know what functions are, you know what return values are, data types, exception, exception handling, classes, objects, and so on. And all you need to learn here is how to do those things in C++ and you need to add some concepts like pointers, templates, references, memory allocation, and so on, which is confusing in and of its own, but you already know the basics and you don't need to worry about the basics except for maybe a change in syntax, right? Whereas if you're a complete newbie, if you've never coded in your life, the question is why are you learning C++ in the first place? So why are you learning C++ as the first language? I wouldn't say that this tutorial series is bad for you because it's bad for you. I would say that C++ is maybe not the right language for you. If you want to learn C++ for sure and you're convinced and there's no way that I can change your mind, you can watch this tutorial series. It will be fine because I will talk about the basic concepts. I will explain variables. I will explain data types and so on. Uh, I will not uh, say you need to already know this, but you have ev everything that you're going to see is probably going to confuse you. Whereas if you at least know something like Python, you know what an integer is, what a Boolean is, what a full loop is, what a, a while loop is. And at least you're not going to be confused by that, but only by the notation or by the way it's written in C++. Whereas as a newbie, it's going to confuse you as a concept. And it's also going to confuse you uh, the way it's written and done in C++. So if you know that you're going to learn C++ for sure, you can watch a series. But I would probably recommend learning a language like Python or Java or C Sharp first before starting to learn C++ because C++ is very difficult and not beginner friendly at all. However, as I said, if you made up your mind already, you can watch this tutorial series as well. And then there's also another uh, category of people who are the C programmers. There are a lot of people who already know C and they want to learn C++ as, uh, as an addition to C because C++ is object oriented, C is procedural and so on. And uh, those guys also oftentimes want to learn C++. And even though you can watch this tutorial series, if you're transitioning from C to C++, I think that it's going to be kind of boring to you because uh, you're going to encounter a lot of beginner concepts. If you're already a C programmer, you're actually operating on a lower level than C++. So you're already familiar with pointers and allocation of memory and, uh, and all of those low level things. And you're also familiar with loops and, and uh, data types. So you should probably watch a tutorial series that is focused on the differences between C and C++ and not a basic tutorial series like this one, because here we're going to talk about everything. We're going to cover what uh, a data type is, what a variable is, what a full loop is, how it's written and so on. So if you're transitioning from C to C++, you can definitely watch this tutorial series, but expect it to be um, very easy for you and maybe even boring for you. This series is perfect for people who are learning Python or who are already decent at Python and now want to transition to C++ because this channel, as you've probably noticed, uh, has a lot to do with machine learning and Python. 
Uh, the focus is very hard on Python and now we're going to add C++ to our arsenal of programming languages because there are a lot of things that cannot be done with Python and uh, for those things we need C++. So C++ is a great addition to Python. This combination is deadly and this tutorial series is perfect for everyone who wants to learn both of those and already knows Python. And of course for Java and C Sharp it also works but it's actually even better for Python programmers. So next let's talk about why C++ is a good language to learn, why you should choose to learn it and why Python or Java or C Sharp are not enough as a language. And the number one reason that comes to mind is the performance issue. C++ is a super fast language. This does not mean that every C++ code is necessarily going to run faster than C Sharp code, but it means that C++ has the potential if you optimize the code, if you write good code uh, to be faster than C Sharp. If you don't write good code, it's not necessarily going to be faster. But if you write good code in C++, you can have the maximum performance or not necessarily the maximum performance, but very, very high performance. If you want to have maximum performance, you would have to go into machine code directly probably, but you can have a very high performance because you can do a lot of things manually. C++ gives you the control over your system. It's a low level language and you can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, one reason, one additional reason for why it's so fast is because it's compiled and I'm not going to get too technical here. But a compiled language, what you basically have is you have source code and C++ files, header files, whatever, and you compile them into executable files. So you have executable files here, binary files, um, which you essentially can just run and they have the program code in there and they don't need any interpreter to run that code. It's compiled, you once write the code, you compile it and then you have bytecode. Whereas uh, in languages like Python, what you have is you have a script and this script has some instructions. And then you have an interpreter and this interpreter converts every single statement into bytecode uh, on the fly during runtime. And this of course uh, is bad for the performance, but even languages like Java and C Sharp, um, and again, I don't want to get too technical here, but what they basically have is they have, uh, what's happening here, sorry. Um, you have some source code here, some .java code, for example. Uh, and then what happens is you compile it into JVM bytecode. So you have the Java virtual machine, for example, and this then has the Java bytecode in here, but it's not actual machine code yet. So what happens then is you have an interpreter that interprets that bytecode uh, during runtime into machine code, finally. Again, I don't want to get too technical here, but every language like C Sharp and Java and Python is at least to some degree interpreted where C++ is completely compiled. And this is also a reason for its performance, for its high performance. Um, and the performance is a very, very big uh, advantage of C++. You can max out performance if you want to. And this is also the reason why it's so highly used in AI, in hacking, in finance, uh, especially in finance, you need to have um, a very, very fast execution time. The models themselves can be modeled in Python. You can use Python as an, uh, as, as an interface for design, for choosing, for structuring, but the actual code has to be written in C, C++, sometimes in assembly, because in finance, everything's about milliseconds. You, you can't afford to lose performance to an interpreter. You need to have it as fast as possible. Uh, same in AI, TensorFlow and uh, NumPy and all these Python libraries are actually written in C and C++. Python itself is written in C, C++. So Python works fine because it's the layer of structuring. You're choosing the structure in Python, but the actual code that gets run in the background is C++ or C code. Uh, same goes for game development, Unreal Engine, C++ Engine. Um, if you write your own engine, you're going to use C++. And even Unity, which works with, uh, uh, with C Sharp, is based on C++. It's written in C++. So whenever you're doing something like graphical computation, game development, 3D games, Java, Python are not, not to be taken seriously there. Uh, Unity is a good engine. You can work with C Sharp there, but it's also based on C++. So if you really want to get serious about game development, you probably want to learn C++. Um, also, whatever you want to do on a low level, like drivers, operating systems, and so on, everything's based on C, C++, assembly, whatever. Um, and also browsers. A lot, of, a lot of applications are actually based on C++ because that's the... C and C++ are mother and father of all programming languages nowadays, at least on of the imperative programming languages. And an additional uh, an additional reason to learn C++ 
uh, besides all these things like performance and all these application fields is just it makes you a better programmer. It makes you a better computer scientist because you start to understand what's happening on a lower level. It's easy to, to just do stuff in Python. It's easy to just say, uh, let me just run this here. But in C++, you actually understand what you're doing. You actually have to do it manually. You have to allocate memory to free mem memory. You have to work with pointers and templates and all that. You need to do these things manually. And you cannot just uh, call an interface that does everything for you. And this makes you a better programmer, even if it's hard sometimes. And of course, there are many more reasons that I'm not going to all mention here. Uh, you can get super good job offers with uh, with C++. You can flex your skills in coding interviews. It's good for competitive coding. C++ is a great language to learn in general. So that's it for the introduction to the tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you want to see more videos of this tutorial series, let me know. Of course, I'm going to make more videos in the beginning, but depending on your feedback, depending on your input, I'm going to decide if I'm going to make a lot more videos or just some more videos. I'm definitely going to cover all the basics. Uh, but after that, it depends on how good this series goes. So if it uh, has a lot of likes, a lot of views, if you guys like it, if I get positive feedback, uh, I'm going to make more advanced topics. I'm going to make more advanced videos like machine learning in C++ maybe or uh, hacking in C++, all these uh, niche niche tutorials with C++, advanced C++ and so on. I would like to do that. I like C++ as a language, but I will only do that if uh, there is enough positive feedback for this tutorial series. So let me know in the comments and by hitting the like button if you want to see more videos uh, about C++. Also make sure you subscribe to this channel in order to see more future videos for free. And other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.